New State. No, it's all good. Thank you very much. Certainly to uh, South Australian Police Service. Um, I would really um, appreciate the opportunity and um, like-minded organisations that look after kids within South Australia is uh, highly important for the purpose of uh, the Daniel Morgan Foundation road trip. Uh, currently, Denise and I are touring right around Australia, having left uh, just on three weeks ago from Brisbane, and we've toured through New South Wales, Victoria, whipped across to Tasmania, and uh, obviously uh, arrived South Australia. Uh, on the trip, we've uh, attended quite a number of schools and spoken to the children directly. Um, this includes this morning at Gawla. We spoke with the kids at uh, Trinity College there. Um, we've also met with uh, quite a number of uh, government officials uh, in the child safety industry, as well as um, ministers, particularly education ministers, um, in many of the states. So we're really appreciative um, of that opportunity. The purpose of the road trip is twofold. It's to promote Day for Daniel, and Denise will talk about uh, Day for Daniel specifically very shortly. Um, and the second purpose of the road trip is to promote the Daniel Morecambe Child Safety Curriculum, which has been an overwhelming success from all feedback that we've received and Education Queensland has received um, since its inception. The Daniel Morecambe Child Safety Curriculum was launched in three phases. There's prep, to year two, years three to six, and then years seven to nine. The first phase, prep to year two, was launched uh, around September, October last year, and at the three to six and seven to nine, more or less four months ago and two months ago. So it's been fully launched for a couple of months. Um, is it working? I think is the, uh, um, what everybody's interested in. It certainly is. Um, the feedback that we get from principals, teachers, the students and we witness ourselves is the kids are very tuned in to wanting to learn about safety. I think safety messages have been around forever but the reality is kids always think that will never happen to me. Those bad things happen to sadly children on the other side of the world or in remote areas. It won't happen to me in this suburb in this place. By linking Daniel Morecambe's name to the safety program um, it brings back the reality that even though you feel safe day by day, hour by hour, things can change. And of course with the internet and uh, mobile phone use these days, particularly with young teenagers, um, they become overconfident and overtrusting in that area. So the Daniel Morecambe Child Safety Curriculum is making a difference. We have presented at a school in Queensland and a young lass with a couple of her friends left the assembly quite discreetly and she disclosed at the office to uh, train staff while we're presenting. So that's a very powerful story, very unnerving, uh, but that is true. And another time we went to a different school and they had just completed the child safety curriculum which is uh, taught by the teachers in class. And we were sort of doing our, our same presentation but it was more a follow-up to the work that uh, the teachers had already done. And they'd completed that some two weeks earlier and the deputy principal identified to us there were two disclosures at that school as a result of the curriculum program. So there were three truly in the last few weeks that um, have made a difference in those three young people's lives. And importantly, um, there's three offenders that have some serious questions to answer, um, which is a good thing in both ends of the scale, of course. So, so they're very tangible things so, of what the, the purpose of the, uh, the trip's about. And um, while the Daniel Walkham Child Safety Curriculum was funded by Queensland Education, there was a large working group, and Denise and I were part of that, with many educators and, and uh, highly professional people in writing curriculum programs, etc. Um, it was fully funded by Queensland Education, therefore it is locked within the state boundary. But one of the conditions of Denise and I um, uh, being on the working committee was that it would be freely available once complete to every state and territory that wishes to adopt that. It is only password protected, 
but it's from minister to minister to talk to each other, appraise the setup and sort of say, yes, um, that's exactly what we need in South Australia, WA or wherever. Um, once they've decided that's the direction they'd like to go, um, I believe it's a relatively easy process. So um, we, Denise and I, as part of the Daniel Morgan Foundation, are really hopeful that it is adopted nationally um, sooner rather than later. That's, uh, that's the wish of the Foundation, most definitely. So if I could pass the question to Denise, she'll uh, tell a little more about Day for Daniel. Yeah. Well, the Foundation um, was started in May 2005. Um, this year will be our ninth day for Daniel. Uh, traditionally, mainly just uh, Queensland schools have done it, and we've had you know, dribs and drabs around Australia. But one of the main aims of the trip this year is to get you know, a lot of the schools and the ministers and a lot of community people to help promote Day for Daniel um, all around Australia for us. Um, just a Two weeks ago, the, the Foundation won an award for Day for Daniel in Child Protection Week in Queensland for media and communication, which we thought that was a really, really great event and really lovely. Day for Daniel basically started with just a small with a, a small committee basically saying we want something on at the end of the year where children wear red and educate. That's, that's the main theme. We're not, we're not after money. It's not a fundraising day. We want children to come home. At three o'clock in the afternoon, safer, with more knowledge than when they went to school at nine o'clock in the morning. So a lot of the schools basically wear red. They might have a... But we want them to have a safety lesson, have some internet safety, get their drop to copy in, their school-based police officer, uh, watch... Uh, we've got a child safety DVD. Anybody can order that. We'll post that out <coughs> free of charge. And if schools and businesses register, we'll send them a DVD some activity sheets, uh, the poster, um, and some bunting flag and balloons and bits and pieces like that. But we really want the schools to register. We've also got um, pr uh, great prizes this year for the schools that do register. We have um, 24 iPads, so one school in each state and territory go into the draw to win um, three iPads for their school. Then those eight schools then go into a draw for $10,000 cash that they can purchase any educational material they wish for their school. And there's also a prize for businesses that register as well. But we're really encouraging schools to register and Day for Daniel is we read and educate, that's, that's our motto. And if people are interested, the reason we've got red, Daniel was last seen wearing red the day he was missing. That's, that's the reason. Thank you. Thanks, Denise. Um, it's my privilege to be able to welcome the Morgans to South Australia, South Australia so they can promote Day for Daniel and the curriculum that they've developed. I don't think any parent can imagine um, what the Morgans have been through unless they've been through that same situation themselves. But if we uh, look for a positive out of the trauma and tragedy that they've had to experience is this positive message that they're spreading in relation to child safety and their, their key themes of uh, recognise, react and report are really important messages that we hope children uh, can pick up through this process and in some way perhaps help them uh, prevent being a, another statistic or another police report that we have to consider and, and pass that terrible news on to another family. The, um, the work of uh, the Foundation is uh, really important. It gives uh, an avenue for people to appreciate and pick up those key messages and uh, we're certainly supportive of any worthwhile initiative that's going to contribute to child safety. Do you have any questions of the more or myself? Well, it's relation to the curriculum, can you give us a bit more of an idea of what you actually mean by a curriculum and, and how, how it's actually would be rolled out in schools, what the sort of key messages are? That how, we, yeah, there's, uh, there's three particular phases mm -hmm. and each of those phases has nine individual lessons. Um, they're obviously customised for the maturity of each of the uh, blocks of students. Um, clearly in the years seven to nine there's more emphasis on internet safety and uh, the predators that lurk online, and um, uh, obviously uh, the bullying aspect and those sorts of things. Um, for the younger students, um, it's not just about 
sexual abuse and child abuse as such. It's also about the dangers. It is called the child safety curriculum. So it is simple things like safety in the kitchen, out across the road um, safely. Those sorts of things are also incorporated into the curriculum program there. And do the teachers in schools do the lessons as part of their usual classwork? Or is yeah, there, there is. Um, what's been included in the curriculum program is different levels of support. Mm -hmm. So there's parental support, which is available online for all parents. There's printed material there also for the parents. Um, there's extensive uh, learning aids for teachers as well. And, um, and the teachers also have uh, phone access and, uh, and computer access where required uh, just to assist those, uh, those teachers with how they should approach uh, various questions or disclosures themselves. So there's support mechanisms already rolled out and um, to our knowledge, uh, seem to be very fluent and working well. We spoke with 